Welcome back to Infinity TV. I go by the name of DJ Treacy Trees. Today is Friday, June 23rd, and these are the breaks. And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. Welcome back to The Breaks. I am your host, DJ Treacy Treese. And this Friday, we are coming hot off of the NBA draft. Let's jump right into today's show. Today's Break It or Leave It is, of course, about Victor Wimbignana, the number one NBA draft pick to the San Antonio Spurs. Now, this is not a surprise to anyone who has been following anything NBA related. I'm talking about the NBA app. It's been all over NBA TV. It's been on the commercials. They followed this guy um, from France who's been playing professionally there with no college experience. They connected the French connection to the Spurs. They've done all of this media to lead up to this predicted number one draft pick. And if you listen to last week's episode, I called it a flop and I am continuing to stand on that for various reasons. Mm -mm. This past week, Wimby got on the press conference and uh, one of the reporters asked him about his weight. You know, do you think that this is going to be a huge problem in the NBA? This is a standard question that most players are asked, and it's because of the athleticism of the NBA. It's not because of, you know, we don't think a, weight, a specific weight class can work. It's really about how physical the play is and can you keep up with other players, right? So they asked him that question, and he said that, he thinks that they should skinny up. Kind of worried about that. Kevin Durant uh, is close to his same size. Of course, Wimby is, um, in his nature, exclusive in how tall, his wingspan, everything about him, right? But Kevin Durant's had some issues with injuries. We're worried about the competitiveness of other centers and other players like him. I also think, like, those dribbles and, like, step backs that he does are going to get picked off by some of the small, smaller, more quicker guards. We'll see. I do think that he will be great for ticket sales. If you watch the draft, they uh, zoomed us into the San Antonio Stadium and all the fans were there. People were clapping. They called him his new, the, the new leader of the team. So I think San Antonio got exactly what they were looking for in Wimby. They've got more people that are going to come out to the games. I don't know if it's going to help for winning at all, to be quite honest. Um... I'm just thinking about him being matched up with a joker. I, of course, they're probably not going to do that straight out of the gate, but thinking of a player like him matched up with a Kevin Durant or even a joker, it just seems like he needs to add a little bit. He does, he does. And I think it'll happen over time. I don't think he's going to go straight out of the gate and do that. Um, another thing, I was watching a draft, and I want to call out the NBA because it was so annoying watching it. And as they're telling this Wimby story, they're constantly referencing LeBron. Now, as you can see from my T-shirt, I'm a major LeBron fan. They call me Shabron James. You're not about to talk bad about LeBron in my presence or anywhere on any of my internet platforms, okay? So the fact that they just keep referencing LeBron makes it feel like they're reaching. They, they're trying to polarize the audience and constantly make it a thing. And it's just, for me, they're not comparable. They, they didn't have the college part of it, which kind of makes it comparable but as players they're they 100 mm -mm. different you know what i mean lebron doesn't have that height he doesn't have that wingspan he he came out as a different player entirely so i don't think it's a fair question to say 20 years after the fact who would you pick lebron over Wimby? it's an irrelevant conversation that doesn't make any sense so cut that out espn it's annoying right all right let's go right into the nba breakaway report before the draft, the NBA was already on fire this week on social media, y'all. The number one thing that I want to talk about today in my breakaway report is CP3 to Golden State. What the hell? I have no idea what the motives were behind this, but it seems like Golden State was in a rush to get Jordan Poole out of there. So it seems like they kind of overpaid for him a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how he fits into the rotation. It seems like most people online 
are saying that he's going to come off the bench. I don't know how well he's going to play with Steph Curry or if he's going to play with Steph Curry at all because um, the general consensus is that Golden State fans are worried about the points or the time where um, Steph is not on the floor. They're wor- worried about that gap. So hopefully CP3 can can fill in there. To be honest, the only thing that I think that Chris Paul can add to the Golden State experience is assists. Reliably assists. That's it. Um, his post game season, eh, you know, it's like his post game play. He's kind of not reliable in that way. You're not sure if he's going to get injured or if he's going to produce in the way. We've also had some production issues very similar to the Jordan Poole thing. It's like you're a great player on these couple of games, but then you don't show up at all. So maybe they have some greater plan that I don't know about. Um, and I'm hoping that it is, but it looks a little bit desperate on the Golden State side. It looks like their dynasty is over and they're trying to get one last effort for a championship Bye-bye. run with Steph. But <laughs> I think in the West, go we haven't seen anything from Golden State where they can contest against Jokic still. So Denver is still looking like the Kings, no pun intended, of the West. Um, and we'll see if any teams with these trades after you know the draft has happened, if we can catch up in any way. Moving on to Unbreakable. Let's talk about Damian Lillard. Lillard. <laughs> Lillard. Lillard. Damian Lillard and the Portland Trail Blazers, y'all. Here's my belief. I think that they are in a toxic relationship together. I think that Damian can't quit them. They can't quit Damian for real. It sounds like Dame is really trying to pull away from Portland. But as y'all saw from the draft last night, they got scooped. And I am a Scoop fan. I might like Scoop in, you know, maybe 10 years or something like that. More than I even like LeBron. And you heard that here first. I haven't told anybody that. I'm a major fan of Scoop because of that work ethic, you know, knowing exactly what you want to do, skipping the college route, going straight to the G League, hustling. His 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 physique is just imp- impressive for somebody who has no professional experience and didn't go through something like a March Madness uh, kind of tournament where, you know, you were against that kind of pressure. So I am impressed with Scoot. I think that Portland won the draft. I can see now a reason why Dane would want to stay. I think if he was going to stay with Portland, he has the best chance of getting a championship with that competitiveness in Scoot and his team. You heard it here first. And I would uh, like to also give you a fun fact. Scoot already matched up with Wimby. So Scoot went third. Wimby went first. Back in October, they've already matched up. And Scoot won that. And they got the game winner. So I'm further proving my theory (laughs) that uh, Wimby will be a flop and that Scoot will actually be the star of this draft class. Also, the Thompson twins that, you know, I got to call them out. They went to two separate places, and that was a cute story. I'm just like, oh, five sets of twins in the NBA. How awesome is that? So, you know, that that as well. Breaking all the rules, y'all. I want to, I think we should take a quick commercial break before I go into this controversial story. Definitely keep it locked here. I got a lot of juice telling you about the Mariah Mills and the Zion Williamson story, y'all. Keep it locked. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services.
A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Welcome back to The Breaks. I'm DJ Tracy Treese, back like I never left. And we are jumping right back into Breaking the Rules, y'all. This week's Breaking the Rules story is super scandalous, and you know I love a little bit of gossip with sports, right? Let's talk about the Mariah Mills and Zion sex tape drama. Oh, my God, the Internet has been ablaze with this. Boom. Now, most people didn't even know who Zion Williamson was. The people who knew Mariah didn't know Zion, to be honest. Those two fan groups never mixed. I didn't even know they were dating, semi-dating in a situationship or anything. But here's what happened. Zion evidently was dating uh, on the side Mariah Mills, who's an OnlyFans model and a former adult star. No shade. We don't have no problem with nobody's profession, okay? But Zion gets on Instagram, and he has a gender reveal party with his girlfriend. So major issue here is Mariah Mills, the OnlyFans girl, she don't know she the side chick. So when she see that they having a baby, she is completely confused and flabbergasted, evidently. She goes on a Twitter rant, y'all, like Twitter rampage. She had, literally, I looked online, it said she tweeted more tweets about Zion than games he's played in the NBA, which is crazy to say as a statistic, but she went on a full rage mode. Some of the things that she said before her Twitter ultimately got suspended, which is hard to do. By the way, you know, Elon's Twitter is a lot more free. So some of the things that she said, she said NBA, and she's adding the NBA, which is another problem, okay? Keep your relationship problems from people's job. This is crazy. At NBA, I have sex tapes of me and Zion Williamson, and he also has them on his trap phone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Zion Williamson, why he got a trap phone? Okay, he's not trapping. He's working at the Pelicans, okay? He's in New Orleans. He's mostly on the bench hanging out, working out at the gym. He's playing a little bit of 2K. We know where Zion is, okay? But also, uh, when when she announced this on Twitter, nobody was excited to see the sex tape. And I think that we should uni just universally let her know, please do not release the sex tape. Nobody is requesting this. This is not a hot commodity of any type. And I don't think that you, first of all, revenge porn is not cool at all. It's a federal offense, I believe. If not a state offense, you shouldn't be doing revenge porn at all. It's not something that you should be doing. But to to want to drop one of Zion Williamson, it's like most people, you know, not hot about that, wanting to even see that tape. Then she says, trade him now. He doesn't deserve to be in New Orleans. So now you're using a sex tape to tell his NBA team to trade him, then says sex tape dropping soon, starts promoting it like it's an album. Ma'am, what is happening? This is absolutely crazy. It's giving desperation. I don't, it, it's just deplorable. Please make it stop. I'm glad Twitter just went ahead and suspended her account because unfortunately this has put Zion in a really, really tough spot. He has uh, missed 164 games because of injury. So now on top of this looming uh, issue that, you know, the fans are saying, are, are they going to keep him? Are they going to trade him? On top of that, we're dealing with this social media, terrible media storm of you Having this girl, well, I mean, he didn't make her do it, but now we're in this situation where we're being tweeted <laughs> by an OnlyFans model about this side chick situation. Here's my just take for Zion and all the people out there who are going to have side chicks, which I don't do not condone. Just it complicates your life, I'm telling you. Here's my, if you are going to have a side chick, tell her she the side chick. OK, or if you got a side dude, I don't care what the gender is of your side piece. If you have a side piece 
they need to know that they are the side piece so they can play their role accordingly. See, you had this girl out here believing that she was going to be your baby mama and that y'all was going to ride off into the sunset behind your white picket fence and she got your your, uh, text messages all over Twitter where you like, what do you want me to do? Okay, yeah, I got a baby. Stop all this drama. Like, you're talking to her like she crazy, man. If you had just told her she was a side piece, she might have played her position and just, you know, asked you to take her on a trip to Jamaica or something like that to resolve this situation. So the moral of the story here is she is dead ass wrong. Mariah Mills, stop this kind of activity. And anybody else who is thinking about using revenge porn or some kind of sex tape to stick it to the man, be done with that. It's a played out kind of thing. And I don't even think the Pelicans are considering this. It's just aggravated this man's situation a little bit. But you go to the circus, you stay around for too long, you play silly games, you win silly prizes, Zion. So get your life together off the court, please, because this is definitely going to affect your bag in some way. Let's move on to Heartbreak Hotel. What is my heart broken about this week, y'all? Honestly, it's Marcus Smart being traded to the Grizzlies. That 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 trade hit me hard. And I'm not even a Celtics fan, to be honest. I just like Marcus Smart. He dyed his hair green. He seems committed to the team. He plays hard through plays. He don't really complain that much. He, you know, is a great defensive player of the year. You sent two. Now the Grizzlies have two defensive players of the year. Okay? Plus job, plus all this other offensive, you know, traction that's going to happen. I just, that kind of broke my heart because I felt like he was a franchise player. He's one of them players that you like. You know what? Every time you see him, he's repping for his team. He's getting the crowd revved up, the the team revved up. He's signing autographs. You know, it was this, this one of my coworkers um, was talking at work, and she said her nephew called her and was crying because <laughs> – he got, which is so sad that the whole city of Boston is sad. Um, I'm not meeting this in no facetious way. I'm kind of smiling, but I really feel sad about the whole Marcus Smart thing. Hope Przingis works out for y'all. Um, actually, I really hope that blows up in y'all face and that the Lakers could uh, get some smart moves in this offseason. We can take y'all down because that, that's a dumb move on the Celtics. I don't know what the Celtics were thinking by letting uh, Marcus Smart go, but Hey, the Grizzlies are a lot better off, especially while Ja Morant is out, to be to be for real. Let's move on to breaking the bank. Talking about some money. Um, let's go to the home team, Lakers. Let's talk about the Lakers. It's two, two bags we need to drop, Lakers front office. And I don't know who's watching this. Hopefully, maybe some somebody from the team or somebody's kid or something, you know, is looking at my cute face and can be like, she has some great suggestions for us. She'd be right about stuff on the internet. Um, so the first two players, I, the two players I need, Kyle Kuzma. We need that old thing back while we let him go, right? Let's not pretend like the Wizards aren't really just like a development team for the Lakers. We send some of our second string players there. They get a little bit better and then they come back. You know, that's happened a couple times in our favor. And I'm hoping that this really can happen with Cuz, right? He belongs in L.A. He looks like he he fits in here. He does some modeling on the side. He has a great side job that fits in also with L.A. Um, so I'm, I'm going hard for Kyle Kuzma. So whatever that bag requires, he is a free agent. Please drop some money on my man Kyle another uh free agent unrestricted free agent that we need to get is Fred Van Vliet okay we need a good shooter we thought Malik Beasley was gonna be our guy he folded up like a just a piece of paper I mean just a paper plane that man folded up I don't know what happened I think it my theory here I think I do know what happens is it's hard to play in the lake show you know, the lights get bright. Everybody's clapping. They were talking about year 20. LeBron bo- broke a, a title. So it's, it's as my daddy used to say, pressure bust pipes. I think that's kind of what happened there. And he was trying to do his best. We got some good shots, but he couldn't reliably be that guy for us. Van Vliet is that guy. He can shoot. He don't even need a screen. He can pull up from half. There are so many different things. We need to lock down Van Vliet, drop that bag on Kuzma. I don't know who we need to cut, wave. Um, I got some suggestions on that. We'll do that in the next episode um, to see who we pick up in the draft so I can make my predictions uh, wisely here. But we need a reliable shooter, and that is Van Vliet. Kuzma is a big man that adds some of that range back, but he also got some game on the block. Love cuz. Bring him back. All right, y'all, I am breaking out with three quick facts about the L.A. Sparks that we need 
to to get done. The LA Sparks have lost three games straight, and here are my three quick picks <laughs> on why. We've struggled to close out games, y'all. We've really struggled. If we can get that together, that would be amazing. Where is Lexi Brown? We need her back. We have nobody to fill that spot, and now we're signing a bunch of hardship contracts. And it seems like the, ref aren't call, the refs aren't calling any fouls for the L.A. Sparks. So if we can get those three things, I think the L.A. Sparks can turn around a season. I will talk to y'all more about that next week. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to The Breaks on Friday. Again, my name is DJ Treacy Trees. I'm your host every Friday. So meet me here. Keep it locked. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching Infinity TV. I'll see y'all next week.